Hello, and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales of Demystified podcast. Today, we're joined by Megan Gill, who has extensive experience in sales operations. She's currently the VP of sales operations at MongoDB and has been at the business for just over 10 years. So I'm excited to get a deep dive into the sales process and operation there. Megan, welcome to the show, along with your beautiful assistant. Uh, thank you for having me, and I um, just want to introduce my assistant. This is my uh, my six month old son Holden, and in quarantine world, he uh, he ends up being on a lot of these kinds of calls. And this is incredible. The first time we've had a sales ops ninja below the age of twenty five on the show. Welcome, <laughs> Holden, as well. Um, Megan, could you please just give us a little bit more of a background to you, uh, how you initially got into sales operations? Sure. So um, my story is maybe a little unusual, although I haven't talked to many sales ops leaders. I don't think anybody sets out to um, to run sales operations. So I also kind of had a winding path uh, to running this particular function. I joined MongoDB uh, over 10 years ago when the company was very small, um, less than 10 employees. So I was the eighth employee. And so I've been on the journey since then. Now MongoDB is over 2,000 employees, um, publicly traded company. So I've, I've, I've been there through the full uh, journey. And most of my time had been in the marketing department. The first seven years, um, uh, I was within the marketing organization, and I got to build up several different teams, including developer relations, demand generation, um, field marketing. And so about three years ago, when this opportunity to run sales operations presented itself, the, the CEO and the CRO uh, approached me and said, would you be interested in this? This would be a great way for you to round out your skill set, you know, marketing really well, um, learn more about the sales team. And um, for the company, it was great because they got an experienced uh, leader, and I, I did have the background from demand generation, so I understood a lot of the the metrics and, and analytics required um, to run an efficient uh, efficient team. So that's my that's a little bit about my story. Got it. And, and just to give us a little bit more context now on the sales operations of MongoDB, how many people do you have roughly in your sales ops team, and how many uh, reps are you supporting? So in the field, we'll probably end the year with about 300 enterprise sellers. So reps out in the field and probably, mm, I want to say 70 or 80 inside uh, salespeople. The sales operations team um, is broken up into a few different functions. Um, we have an analytics team with about um, uh, three or four people. We have some hiring to do in that team. By the way, we're hiring if anybody's listening to this and wants a job. Um, we have a territory management team, which is five or six people. Um, we have a Salesforce admin team, which is uh, three going on four, another open headcount that we have. And then we have a support um, uh, team based in our India office, which is another 10 people. So that's the overall um, team. So overall, it's about uh, 25 folks uh, supporting, uh, supporting the sales team. Got it. And we'll put links to those job descriptions if we have them below this video or audio, if anybody is interested in those roles. Okay, awesome. Now, so the the, the sales operations job, you joined that about three years ago. And were you the person who formed that role? As in, there wasn't a leader in the sales operations team before you took that role? There was a sales operations function and there there had been, um, actually my, my predecessor, if you want to talk about interesting career trajectories, um, has gone on to become CEO of, an, uh, of a startup. So um, he went from being in finance to running sales ops to CEO. So I think that's a pretty cool um, uh, career story. Um, he's a CEO of a company called Site Tracker. Um, what was the question? Was the team there? So yes, the team was there, but it was very sort of small and lean. There was one analyst and um, I want to say two or three people working on Salesforce. Um, so uh, over the past three years, as a sales organization has scaled, you know, it's required more, more data, more analytics, more sophistication, more tooling in order for us to um, you know, maintain and grow the productivity per rep. I, I think in the early days of MongoDB, you know, you, the, the uh, investment, is, you know, you can kind of get away with... Um, having less investment in sales operations, but now that the team has grown so much, for example, I'll use territory management as an example. You know, we have six or seven teams just in New York City alone. So the sophistication required to assign accounts and build territories for that team is uh, quite different than three years ago when there might've been five or six reps total. 
Got it. Now, now you mentioned uh, in that response, a metric productivity per rep. Can you share something that you've done since taking on the role that has significantly boosted that metric? Um, well, I think the investment in territory management has probably been the area that um, has had the most direct impact on uh, sales productivity. So uh, just maybe stepping back and talking a little bit about MongoDB's uh, sales motion. So MongoDB is database software. And so you can, um, and it, the database is available open source. So anybody can download it for free, get started, try it out. So you can kind of think of it like a freemium model. And we also have a cloud product, which also does have like a freemium model. So we have a lot of people, developers, tinkering with MongoDB. Um, and the database market is also huge. It's a $70 billion market and growing. So we, we're kind of fortunate that our problem isn't necessarily who to call. It's who to call first. And that's where the investment in territory management has come in. And we look at a, a variety of factors. There's, um, we, I mentioned that, for example, a lot of times we have open source developers kind of tinkering with the database. So um, we kind of, we call that internally at MongoDB smoke, as in when there's smoke, there's fire. Um, and so we try to point the reps at the smoke, which is sometimes counterintuitive. Like an account that is uh, got a lot of smoke at MongoDB, that's maybe a mid-market account, is um, is actually um, a much better target from us than your traditional name brand um, enterprise accounts. So um, I would say we're only really on the start of that journey in terms of optimizing territories, but um, investing in territory management and making that shift towards the high propensity accounts um, has been one of the areas where we've been able to really um, boost sales productivity. Over the past few weeks, we've spoken to a hundred sales leaders around the world to understand the impact of COVID-19 on revenue. And we've combined these insights into one single report that covers the immediate impact, the commercial outlook, the tech stack that you need, and actionable advice for sales leaders. You can claim this whole report completely for free if you go to ebster.com forward slash COVID. That's ebster.com forward slash COVID. Got it. And I, I really like, as a marketer, I really like the model of the, the open source and freemium model because it's almost like everybody that you're sales team are going to be calling it has some warmth to you right because they've been they're probably in love with the software etc so that i i really like the smoke concept and it, it totally makes sense how smoke uh, a smoky account could be better than this big brand name that may not be that engaged with the software awesome now you mentioned at the start covid19 what if any impact is that having on the sales team on the sales reps and your management of them uh, it's having a few different impacts. Um, so one impact is obviously we're, we're trying to figure out how to um, train and enable reps remotely and to onboard reps remotely. So we're con we're continuing to hire. Um, so again, can add another link. We're hiring sales reps all around the world. Um, and we've had to um, adapt our, our training programs for an online world. And that's it's not as simple as just taking your week, our week-long boot camp and putting it online. Our sales enablement team has really adapted it to be a optimi an experience that's more optimized for um, online learning. So we have a tool called MindTickle for um, many of the pre-boot um, camp modules. And then we have a series of, of sessions with the, with the team. And then we also use a tool called um, HighSpot to curate content for the reps. And then I would say the other um, adapt, uh, adaptation that we've done around enablement is using a tool called um, Chorus.ai, which helps us record and transcribe um, calls so that we can coach and develop the reps, which we were already using on our in, with our corporate team, side sales team. Um, but we've extended that to the enterprise team since they're now meeting more virtually. And then the last big adaptation that we made was around territory management. So we went and looked at a combination of our own data and industry data to um, decide which sectors would it not make sense for us to be pipeline generating into. And we should shift reps from those sectors uh, and focus them more on sectors that are, are benefiting basically from the lockdown. So um, as an example, we took reps off of accounts in um and the airline industry and hotels and hospitality, and we pivoted them to gaming and online media and um, e-learning and, and um, different companies like that. Um, and in fact, one of the projects we've been working on is what we're calling like the vertical power play. So we've picked, we've done like a, a project across the 
the sales development org, the marketing org, and the sales org to say, hey, here's a list of accounts that we think are uh, red hot right now because of um, COVID-19. And let's do a coordinated marketing sale, mark sales and marketing campaign um, against that uh, list of accounts. Well, it makes total sense. Um, are you seeing now, or are you now, have things are getting back to more normal, shifting resources back into those traditional industries, or is that not something you guys have looked at yet? Um, not yet. I mean, I think um, I think it's going to be a while before uh, travel and leisure and transportation completely rebound. So we're continuing to um, to keep the reps focused on the, the new patches that we've created. That said, like territory management is not a one and done thing, at least not at MongoDB. And that's another sort of evolution in our thinking is we have to constantly be uh, refreshing the, the territories. Um, so we went through that, you know, a major overhaul at, at the um, at the start of COVID nineteen, and we'll just continue to iterate on that um, as we as we continue to hire and grow. For oh, sure, um, sales forecasting. Could you, regardless of COVID nineteen, could you outline the the rough process you guys go through to forecast over the next quarter or year? Sh- Sure. So I would say there's like a few different ways that we're triangulating on a forecast in any given quarter. There's your traditional judgment-based forecast, right? So we have each of the the individual contributors, the first line managers, second line managers, um, give a uh, forecast um, in QBRs at the beginning of the quarter. And um, we use a tool called the VSO to track those forecasts. Um, Aviso also provides us with a um, a machine learning AI based forecast, which is a good um, another data point that we use. We also look at um, our productive capacity. So historically, you know, if we have a hundred reps, we know historically how much those a hundred reps will produce based on their tenure. So that's another data point that we look at. And then lastly, we have some historical data around our qualified pipeline and the amount of deals that we typically find in quarter. So if we, if we know our typical conversion rate on qualified pipe, what our typical conversion rate on qualified pipe is and how much qualified pipe we have in the beginning of the quarter. And we know how much we pull, we typically find in quarter. That's another point. So we kind of triangulate at the, at the CRO level and at the, you know, even at the board level across those different metrics to, um, to come up with the, the forecast. Got it. And then on on metrics, if you could only measure one single sales metric for the rest of your career, which would you choose? <laughs> well, um, I hadn't prepared for one metric. I would say I'm going to have to go with uh, two. I mean, I think that it's key to look at leading and lagging indicators. So my leading indicator would always be qualified pipeline with the caveat that you know, you have to have pretty good definitions um, around pipeline to make it an effective metric to look at. So in our case, you know, we consider a uh, deal qualified once it reaches a scope stage and we have a certain set of gates that the rep needs to hit in order to get the, the opportunity into qualified pipe. And that is has been a really important shift in thinking because with a long sales cycle, like you might have with an enterprise software product like the database, um, you know, you can't wait until... Um, until the rep is closing deals to know if there's a problem or not. You want to be able to diagnose and coach um, based on the leading indicators. And then I would say the other most important indicator, which is more the lagging indicator, is productivity per rep, which basically says how efficient is your sales force um, on a per rep basis. So if I add 10 more reps, I can expect to get X more dollars um, from that investment in reps. So those would be the two metrics that I think are, are the most important for tracking the sales team. Thank you very much. And then final question is, who has inspired or influenced you the most in sales operations? Um, so I did think about this question and I, I have to go with John McMahon. Um, I don't know if you know, know John McMahon, but he's on our board and he's on the, um, you know, he was the um, head of sales at several different companies before going in um, uh, being an advisor and board member to sales teams. And I think the thing that I, really appreciate about John is that he really can simplify things. <laughs> and I think it's really easy as a, particularly in sales operations where you're really in the data and in the numbers and the details, it's really easy to um, um, not zoom out or forget to zoom out and think about things as a bigger picture. So for example, he's always somebody that I bounce 
ideas around metrics, comp plans off of it. He's been um, uh, uh, pretty amazing. So that would be my sales ops hero. Shout out to John. Um, amazing. Okay, so here's what I picked out. Um, I really love the concept of smoky accounts. And it, it might not be super relevant to people that do not have this massive community of developers, but um, I, I quite like the analogy. I also, I think the your, your dynamism with COVID-19 it must have had, or it like sounded very um, effective as in relatively fast shifting resources, not necessarily firing people or getting rid of people, but shifting resources to growing industry if I haven't heard that before. And then it was almost like a meta metric that you mentioned the, the importance of having good definitions of, of pipeline, <laughs> because there's no point measuring it if you, you, people, everybody doesn't know clearly what qualified pipeline actually means. So um, Megan and MongoDB are hiring. There'll be links below this video and audio. And also, of course, thanks to the real star of the show, Holden. Thank you guys for coming on. <laughs> thanks for having me.